Hello everyone, welcome to this five week presentation. My name is Sam Ellick, I'm a data scientist at Agrometrics and today we're talking about crop yield predictions. So why accurate crop yield predictions? For farmers these are really important as they can give them insight on what to grow and when to start growing. For policymakers, being getting timely accurate predictions can help inform them on strategies in the future and this is really important when you're considering imports and exports into the country. A little side note here, scalability is important. Uh, having an accurate model for a small field is good, but if you want to ge generate regional insight, then your model needs to be able to be uh, scalable. So our objectives this day are to take a process-based model called ROIFOST uh, and use it on a small subset of fields, 1,444. Later on, we're going to take this uh, simple uh, process-based model and supplement it with earth observation data we're going to use leaf area index for some data assimilation and then we're also going to use synthetic aperture radar uh, in a more traditional machine learning approach. So out of the box we have two inputs for the ROFOS, the soil and the weather which is which was taken from the Agrometrics data marketplace. The two outputs of ROFOS we're inter interested in today is the yield and the leaf area index. If we look at the yield for this uh, basic ROFOS model we can see they've got a root mean squared error of around 5 tons per hectare. I like the, pl this, the plot on the right for this. So if you look at the delta, the simulated minus observed, we can see the majority of distribution is below the zero point. And so this is showing we've got a high negative bias in our yields predictions. Looking at the simulated leaf area index in this continuous line and comparing it with markers, which are true observed leaf area indexes from Verde, we can see that there's a marked difference particularly in the amplitude between May and July. This is where we bring in our data assimilation strategy. So we're trying to optimize some Wolfhouse parameters. We're only optimizing three at the moment because we want to avoid overfitting. These are around the temperature days required for a plant to reach maturity and the maxi maximum relative increase in leaf area index. So for any given run, SpotPy will take up the simulated leaf area index and the leaf area index and compare them and then update these parameters. This is then run multiple times over and over again until the simulated leaf area index and the Verde leaf area index are similar to a uh, predefined limit. At this point, we, would, we can then take the results from the uh, simulated yield. So looking at the results straight away from this data assimilation model, we can first see that the delta, the simulated minus observed, the distribution is focused a lot more on a zero point. So we've removed a big chunk of that negative bias. If we look at the leaf area index, we can see the simulated and observed leaf area index values are a lot more in line with each other. And there is a high correlation between the simulated and observed leaf area index from the scatter plot here. We then went a step further, we wanted to optimize a fourth Wolfhouse parameter, CVO, which is the efficiency of converting energy into mass for storage organs. We're just using an off-the-shelf machine learning regression problem and SAR data to uh, calculate this CVO parameter used, and then Wolfhouse will use this parameter and have it set constantly. Can't, due to time constraints, can't go into detail on how this was done, but it's an extra parameter for what that Wolfhouse can use to improve results. So if we look at, uh, after adding the CVO parameter, or optimizing it, we can see that the root mean squared error has reduced to sub two tons per hectare, and our simulated and observed yields are showing a, a better linear correlation with each other. So taking these models and comparing them with some national statistics. So on the left, we have DEFRA, yield and production, and on the right, we have our model, yield and production as well. And we can see that the trends captured we, we captured the yearly trends uh, for three regions in the UK, uh, the exception being uh, East Anglia uh, in 2020, where we show a marked difference. And we've attributed this to a low Verde signal in uh, East of England during this time. But being able to capture regional trends uh, with this model uh, was quite important. And to us was a, a good sight that we were on the right track. In conclusion, we developed a Wolfos model that uses data from the Algometrics marketplace. We then supplemented this model with uh, leaf area index and SAR via SpotPy and traditional machine learning approaches to help optimize the model. Uh, we ended up with a sub two turns per hectare root mean squared error 
and our, our, we can capture some trends which are aligned with DEFRA figures. In future work, we want to further refine the model, look at uh, different parameters, applying it to other crops, uh, etc. Pause here if you're interested in the source of our data sets. And that's it. Thank you very much for this Whistle Stop tour. Have a good rest of the week.